sit back, relax, and enjoy the uh, gathering song this morning uh, by Hillsong Worship.
So this is the last week that we're gonna work on uh, virtues. Um, we kind of interceded uh, with three of them here in the last uh, three weeks. And then next Sunday, we'll get back to our uh, Bible in a year. So I would encourage you, as, of course, to uh, keep up with that reading. If anybody needs a schedule or uh, doesn't have one, please see me and I'll make sure that you get one. Um, it's a marathon to go through the Bible in a year. There's no question about it. But all I can do is assure you that the end result is absolutely beautiful. So please catch up if you can. If you can't, just start right where we're at now. And uh, that will also help you uh, to understand the sermons as they come up. So this particular virtue that I wanted to talk about today was is called hope. There's a lot of different sermons out there that you could use on hope, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give a little snippet today of one of those aspects. Um, but before we get started, there's a couple of mental ex exercises that I need to define for you, and the first is the word fatalism. Fatalism is the belief that all events are predetermined and therefore inevitable. Now, in a minute, you're going to see why you believe in fatalism. Because the next slide is going to show you the two sides of fatalism. And the two sides are, on one side is pessimism, which expects the worst. And on the other side is optimism which presumes the best. I'm pretty sure that all of us fall into one of these two categories at different times in our life. But as we go through our day-to-day -day life, we tend to lean one side or the other. You're either pessimistic or you're optimistic about most things. But in contrast, and notice I use the word contrast, in contrast, fatalism is the virtue of hope. One of the very best definitions I've ever run across for hope is this one. It said, hope is a vision of better days that changes us in the present. Now pay attention to those words, quote, changes us in the present, unquote, because they're extremely important. I'll give you an example. Let's just say I'm hoping for a promotion. So what should I do in the present? Well, maybe I should work harder, or maybe I should work smarter, or maybe I should learn more. Whatever I should do to change me to make me a more valuable employee if I want a promotion. It changes us in the present. In essence, notwithstanding all the many religions that are out there, but in essence, there are two types of hope. There's a pagan hope and there's a Christian hope. I define a pagan hope as a hope dependent on a person's own ability and what they call good luck or karma. Now entirely different is the Christian hope. The Christian hope I define as a hope dependent on the author of hope, Jesus Christ, and the biblical promises of God the Father. Someone once said that if somebody throws a brick at you and hits you in the head, you're not responsible for the fact that they threw the brick. But you are responsible for how you respond to the brick hitting you in the head. That is the majority of what hope is, our response. how we respond to the hope, how we change ourselves in the present. Peter once wrote in his epistle, 
uh, 1 Peter 3, 15, said you must worship Jesus the Lord, as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. I've been reading this verse for years and years. And every time I come across it, I ask myself, can I do that? Can I explain to a pagan what my Christian hope is? I think all of us have that responsibility. All of us should be prepared for that, just in case we get into that conversation sometime. So what I wanted to do today was I'm going to give you six responses to this question. Six things that you can tell a pagan about what your Christian hope is. Number one, it brings light into our darkness. Hope does not deny nor remove the reality of dark and painful providences. However, it does shine a bright light into our valleys and points to a sunrise at the end of them. Number two, hope moves us forward. Christian hope is a realistic expectation of good of the good and glorious future based on the reliable word of God that underlines the expectations and increases our momentum our momentum, our changing ourselves. Number three, hope energizes the present. It's worth living today because we know that the eternal tomorrow will be so much brighter. The pagans, so we're talking about death here, the time of death. Pagans consider this dread because they haven't prepared for it we consider it a desire. Hope is healing. This is one of my favorite ones. By definition, depression is a sense of hopelessness. If you want to help a depressed person, give them something to hope for. Hope is logical. Hope is not something, by the way, you don't have to write these down because they're all on the back of your bulletin. You can take them home. I encourage you to learn them. Hope is not something that we wait for. Hope motivates action. Remember our original definition. Hope changes us in the present. And one of my all-time favorites Hope is infectious. Just as our attitude of sadness can bring someone down, so too can our hope be inspiring and motivating. So much so that unbelievers cannot help but often say, I want some of what he's got. Finally, in a nutshell, I wanted to kind of give you an example of the difference between pagan hope and Christian hope. Let's say you have two students that are hoping to get through this year, past this year, and to move on to the next. Since we have a college student with us today, uh, we'll use her as an example. One of the students is a pagan and one of them is a Christian. The pagan decides that if he wants to pass, and he wants his hope to come true, he's going to have to study hard to make it happen, depending entirely on himself. But our Christian student decides that if she's going to make it happen, If she's going to make her hope come true, she's going to have to pray. 
pray to the Holy Spirit that he help her to study hard, that he help her to understand the things that are difficult to understand. She prays hard and she works hard. Between the two, the Christian has great confidence. Great confidence because her confidence is not in her own ability as the pagan depends on, but in the ability of the living God. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Taught through the shadows
good and holy Father, our love for you is never ending. It's at this time that we come together with grateful hearts to say thank you for all the many blessings you shower us with. You provide us with the ability to work and receive other blessings that allows us to take care of our families, friends, missions, and your beloved church. Thank you, Father, for growing our, fa our family so that we can take care of your house and each other. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning continues the theme of Jesus being our hope. Father in heaven, after 2020 and half of 2021, so very many of your people have many hopes in their hearts, deep hopes, hopes for a brighter future. I suspect many pagans too 
have come forward with new hopes. Hopes of finding you and eternal salvation. We also hope, Holy Father, that you use us as a vessel to satisfy that hope, to bring them to you until they accept our Lord Jesus and assure themselves of eternal salvation with you in heaven. Guide us, send us the Holy Spirit to encourage us in our hopes and brighten our lives each day. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, which art in Deliver us from evil. 